go. everyone welcome to worship here at faith this morning special word of welcome to you if you are newer to us um, a very merry christmas since we're still in the christmas season and a happy new year to you this morning um, we are thankful that you have chosen to join us wherever you find yourself this morning um, for those of you who uh, regularly attend worship with us you'll notice that my background is a little different this morning uh, that is because I am in Glen Ellen, Illinois, in the Chicago area, uh, visiting my sister and brother-in-law, which we'll introduce here in just a couple of minutes. But I want to welcome you to worship and um, let you know that communion will be a part of worship this morning. And so um, if you want to get uh, juice or wine and bread ready, have that handy. All are welcome to participate in um, the meal this morning. Doesn't matter what your church background is or you have any at all. If you believe in the love of Jesus, if you desire his love in your life, we invite you um, and encourage you to partake in the meal this morning. So just have that bread and wine handy and um, we'll get to it a little bit later. So if you are new to our community, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'd love to hear that you, how you got connected to us and that you are there. Because as you can all see me, I don't have the chance to see you quite yet. So I um, would love to know. You can let me know by emailing me at jane at faithgolden.org. Again, that's jane at faithgolden.org. Would love to hear from you. Well, I'd love to um, also introduce some folks to you this morning. So uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce to you uh, my sister and brother-in-law, Judy and Bert Nuring. Um, I'm going to slide out of the way, let them slide in um, so they can introduce themselves to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning. Um, I'm Judy, Jane's sister. And um, as I have the day off of worship duties at my church, I'm on vacation. Um, we're glad that we are able to host you here with us. And um, as we celebrate Epiphany and the giving of gifts, we're also pretty glad that um, we talked Jane into helping with our outreach this afternoon, handing out masks and personal hygiene products 
before she knew it was 30 degrees and snowing. <laughs> so we appreciate her help with that. And we wish you all a blessed Christmas season. And um, thanks for joining from our home. Do you want to tell them the story behind the communion wear? Oh, um, and Jane would like me to share the story behind the communion wear she's using today. And it is my um, chalice and patent that I acquired while attending the National Youth Gathering many years ago in San Antonio. And it was handmade by a potter um, pretty much right outside the main worship area of the youth gathering. So it's pretty cool to be able to share that with you today also. Well, welcome, and uh, my name is Bert Nearing, and uh, it's a pleasure to uh, to be here uh, from our home, uh, and uh, welcome you uh, to worship this morning. So, thank you again. I'm excited to have been able to share um, a few days with Judy and Bert here, just kind of hanging out um, at the house. And so, um, then our our other host home for this morning. Uh, is Nancy Driscoll, and um, I'm going to send it over to Nancy so that uh, she has a chance to introduce herself to you this morning as well. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Just a little bit about me. My name is Nancy Driscoll. My son and his wife also go to faith, which Tom and Elena, I'm sure many of you know. Um, I was just counting the days, and January 10th, will be 40 years since we moved to Colorado. I see Jane saying, wow, I feel the same way. <laughs> and we joined Faith at that time. Also, uh, just a little note, I just found out yesterday, I'm expecting my ninth great-grandchild. Exciting blessings. That is so awesome, Nancy. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I uh, sent my sister and brother-in-law into another room so that I can do this without a mask this morning for you. Um, but uh, as we begin, just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, don't forget that the annual budget meeting is coming up on Sunday, January 17th, and um, that will be at 1045 here on Teams. So we'll worship with a live event, get out of that, and then come back into a, um, a meeting where we will be able to see each other and talk back and forth. And so, um, and materials for that meeting will be available here on Teams um, and in the office soon. So again, that's January 17th, the online uh, at 1045 a.m. Please join us. And um, it's a chance to hear where, uh, where, how we've done in this past year and, um, and then projections for the year forward, as well as passing 2021's budget. So I um, encourage you all to attend. And then um, the other announcement for this morning, I'm going to send over to Brenda Renz as she's one of the leaders of our One Year to Live Women's uh, dealings, doings this year. So uh, I'll send it over to her. Uh, she's got some information for women. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I wanted to ask you to uh, join us for this exciting event this year. It's going to be a Women's Day of Connection, which we will um, continue to host in the COVID fashion, both online and some in person if we're able to accommodate that in the winter months. Um, it will be held on Saturday, March the 6th, 2021, so not too far away. And we would like to um, invite you, whether you came to the fall session or not, you are welcome to come to the spring session. Uh, we will continue to explore the concepts of loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So it goes along really nicely with today's lesson as well. And as we're working through the details of that, if you will watch the um, Faith Golden website for more information and also be watching your own emails, we will be um, getting more information out to you about the details. But it is a Saturday. It's about a half day commitment. So it's, it's not a lot, but the feedback we got from the fall session was that 
Women really enjoyed it. It was a great time to connect with some current friends and make some new friends. And so we hope that we'll have more of you this spring. We were uh, really blessed to have about 40 people join us in the fall. So my goal is 60 for this spring session. Um, so hopefully you'll think about it and decide to join us this spring. Um, see you all on uh, May this March the 6th. I hope we'll see him in May too, but but March the 6th, that's right. Women, please, please note that on your calendars. Whether you live in Golden or not doesn't really matter. And so we would love to have you join us for the day. Well, as we begin this time of worship this morning, then um, we take time to pause and um, to come to God with our confessions so that we can hear his words of forgiveness. And so I say to you this morning, as we gather to worship God today, we come confessing where we have fallen short, where our lives have not lived up to God's call, where we have slipped in our love of God. So gracious God, hear the confessions of your children as we come to you in love. And I invite you to join me in saying the words that are on the screen. We confess that we have turned away from you and let ourselves be distracted by the things of this world. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have let the power of sin break our relationship with you. But we come humbly repenting asking for your forgiveness for the things known to us and unknown, the things we have done and left undone. Turn our hearts towards you, that we might love you with all our heart, all our soul, mind, and strength. God, in his infinite love and mercy, hears our confessions and forgives our sin. By grace, God makes us new and calls us children of God. May God's love for you strengthen you with power and compel you to love and to let yourself be loved. In the name of the power of God, the creator, redeemer, and spirit. Amen. Well, now as we come, as we continue, I would love for you to give the gift of God's peace to those that you know, those who are with you in your homes this morning. And as always, we invite you to pick up your phone and to share God's peace with those who might be a little further away from you this morning. And so we begin this time by I, I'll say to you, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Will you please share God's peace with one another?
Well, as this morning is um, Epiphany Sunday, it is the Sunday where we celebrate um, the coming of the kings to the baby Jesus. And so um, we I invite you to sing with me this morning as with gladness men of old. <laughs> today. First one is from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 1 through 9. Now this is the Lord commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children and your children's children's may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And also reading from Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is the one. And besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all the strength. And to love one na one's neighbors as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Well, this morning we start a new sermon series entitled Love God. Love is an interesting thing, isn't it? According to the dictionary, it is an intense feeling of affection and a great interest and pleasure in something. According to Hallmark, love is full of flowers and chocolates and endearing words. We all have different ideas about love and people, but when it comes to loving God, it seems like things get even more complicated. How do you love a being you can't see or touch or hold? How, how do you love a being that is as immense as God, as mysterious as God, as unknowable, it seems, as God? And, and can that even really happen with God? Can one really love God? Well, the answer is yes, but it might look or feel a bit different than you think. Because loving God is different in ways than loving a person, and in some ways, it's the same. But that difference, why, why would that be? Well, because as people, we change, we fail, we, we can be touched, we can be held, we can be seen, and we, are, we know we are right here, and we, are, we know when we're with the one that we love. God doesn't change. God can't be physically touched or held, can't be seen, and doesn't, doesn't always feel like God is right here. Plus, I think we desperately want to believe that if we do everything right, if we please God enough, if we do all the right things, then God will bless us and nothing really bad will ever happen to us or we will be able to handle whatever comes so easily. But then when that doesn't play out in the truth of our lives, when things get hard, really hard and nothing is going our way, when pandemics hit and we can't agree, when the happiness we seek seems far away and so does God, when we are mad at God, and yes, you can be mad at God, and turn away, when we fall out of love with God or, or the relationship gets stagnant, we want to blame God. We want to make it God's fault because we're hurt, because we're broken, because this isn't what we imagined and it's different. And so it, loving God is different than loving people. But how we love people can help us know how to love God. 
And so for the next few weeks, we're going to look at what it means for us to truly love God. Now, the honest truth is that there, I don't think there are a lot of people who talk about this. When I was getting ready for this sermon and just looking on a number of the sites that I use as sermon resources and stuff, everything always ends up about how God loves us. And that's important. But, um, but, but very few talk about how do we love God. So as we begin, let's be clear and embrace this first truth. Let's choose to believe it, whether we, whether we feel it all the time or not. And that truth is that God does love us, always and forever, no matter what, doesn't matter. Good day, bad day, good year, bad year, doesn't matter. God loves you. God loves you. Because you are, God loves you. Not because of what you do or don't do. So please, please, please let go of that. I know from experience that that is easier said than done. But I believe it is a necessity in order to love God well. So say it with me. I choose to believe God loves me. All right? Say it with me this time. I choose to believe God loves me. Let's say it one more time. I choose to believe God loves me. Now keep making that choice every single day and hang on to that truth no matter what because that's where we start. And then we have to then we get to recognize the truth in the te the two texts today. The first one that Nancy read for us is from Deuteronomy and it's Moses instructions to the children of Israel right before they entered the promised land. This is after 400-ish years of slavery, after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. As they get ready to come home, Moses reminds them, don't forget. Don't forget. Love the Lord your God with all that you are. And then Moses says, not just love God, heart, soul, and mind, but also part of that. Keep these words that I am commanding you in your heart. Recite them to your children, verse 7, and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Verse 8, bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, write them on the doorposts of your homes and your gates. The command is clear to love God with all that we are in the midst of all that we have and to teach it to our children how to love God as well. Love God first is the first of the Ten Commandments, and Moses recites it here for the children of Israel. And then later, hundreds of years later, Jesus himself in the Gospel of Mark is asked, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus answers with that text from Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And we here at Faith, we put a lot of time and focus on the second part of that command, um, how to love others, because it is so very important for us to do. But right now, for the next few weeks, we're going to focus on the first and most important. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is also very important. First, because if we don't believe God loves us, it is hard to love ourselves. And if we don't believe God loves us, then it's hard to love God. So we do have to start with that truth that God does love us. But also, if we don't spend time loving God, then we end up with, I think, these weird theologies, which is a fancy word for uh, ways to think and talk about God. We end up with images like God is mean and is just waiting to smite us, to, to throw something bad at us, or that God is petty and picks favorites. You know, if you do these right things, then God will bless you. If I just do what the right things, God will give me what I want, what I deserve, of course. And that when that in those warped, weird theologies, then God's blessing becomes about money and power and the earthly things that I want. 
When we don't spend time loving God, I think then weird things happen with what scripture really says. Like if we start believing things are in scripture that really aren't there, things like God helps those who help themselves, or all things are good for those who love the Lord, or money is the root of all evil. Just a news flash: the Bible says none of these things, and that's a whole nother sermon series someday. But when we don't spend time loving God, we end up living as if God really isn't part of our daily lives. <clears throat> Excuse me, unless we need God or unless we want something or want God to do something. And there is so much more available to us in this relationship with God. So much more than simply following rules, simply trying to be good enough, simply going through the motions. But I will put this caveat on before we go any further. If you want to keep the status quo, if you aren't interested in changing or, or putting in effort, if you want to not be bothered by God, then this journey might not be for you. Or perhaps it's especially for you. Having a deep loving relationship with the living God will change us. Abram became Abraham and became the father of generations upon generations. Moses went from hating to speak in front of others to leading a nation of millions. Rahab went from being a prostitute to part of Jesus' family tree. Mary went from obscurity to the mother of God come to earth. Saul went from hating Christians to Paul who is perhaps one of the greatest people on mission ever. When we are in relationship, close relationship with the God of the universe, our lives will change. Will it always be easy? Nope. Will it always be comfortable? No. Will you always like or understand what's going on? Mm, probably not. But it will change you. Draw more into what it means to live as the body of Christ here on earth. I mean, think about this. We're still officially in the Christmas season, even though our world thinks it was over on December 25th. But we are still in the 12 days of Christmas. And the celebration, this is the Sunday where we celebrate the kings or the wise men, um, the, the official church name for the day, this the, the this day, excuse me, this day is Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany is actually January 6th, which will be um, on Wednesday, but it is the day that we celebrate because contrary to how it is so often played out in Christmas scenes all over the world, the wise men most likely did not arrive at the stable because scripture tells us they arrived at a house. And when we put the details together, like after the wise men visited Herod, Herod had all males under the age of two killed. So there's that distinct possibility that Jesus was already close to two years old before the wise men saw him. But the wise men themselves, we don't, we don't know much about them except that they studied the stars and the signs. And when they saw the star, they followed it. From the east, a, a long journey, perhaps took two years to arrive. Think about that two years of travel. No running water, no campers, no RVs, no paved roads for that matter. No laundries, no fast food restaurants, no planes, trains, or automobiles, but camels. Camels in a caravan set up um, tents, took them down, set up tents, take them down, set up tents, take them down. You get the idea. It was a hard journey, a long journey. And when they started out, they really had no idea when they would get there, wherever there was. But they kept going. Good times, bad, hard, easy. They kept pursuing. And their story teaches us a great starting point for loving God. You have to put in time. You have to put in effort. You have to persevere. No great relationship happens without these. 
And a good smattering with all of this time, effort, perseverance, plus a good smattering of our authentic selves. So being in love with God is about relationship. So for right now, I want you to do this. I want you to take your hands and I want you to, to kind of spread your fingers out and then place one hand on each knee. Now, if one, number one, is equals actively loving or excuse me, actively running away, five equals I hardly know, and 10 equals we're deeply in love. Rate your relationship with God. Just press one of those fingers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, into your knee, into your lap. One, actively running away. Five, I hardly know. Ten, we're deeply in love. How, where does your relationship with God stand today? And know this, there is no shame. There is no shame wherever you are. It's just simply where you are, and that is fine. In order to know where to go with a relationship, we have to know where it is. So be honest with yourselves. And you know what? Remember, God already knows. This is not news to God. And you don't have to tell anyone else if you don't want to. But where is your relationship with God today? For me, like I know everyone thinks pastors are or should always be at like 11 on a 1 to 10 schedule, uh, scale. But the truth is there are times when I struggle with my relationship with God as well. I get caught up in the having to please God, to, to make sure God likes me. Relearning how to believe that God loves me as I am. I mean, it's easy for me to believe that God loves all of you as you are, but for myself at times, that's a little harder. There are times when my relationship with God gets all tangled up in, in doing my job, but God wants so much more for me. I know this. And God wants so much more for you. Sometimes I'm afraid to embrace the relationship further because I might have to change or, or I might be called into something that I'm not sure of. Sometimes I don't embrace it because I don't want to disappoint or, or I don't want to be hurt. I've got my own hangups with my relationship with God too. Never doubt that. We all do. But here's what I can promise you. If you choose to dwell deeper into your relationship with God, God is going before you and coming behind you and he's going to be beside you. God's got you and me. So remember, there are three things that are similar to human relationships in our relationship with God. We have to put in effort. We have to put in time, persevere. And it's best when we bring our authentic selves. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes you'll like God. Other times, not so much. But don't give up. Don't be okay with just okay. Why not join me and give it a try? Over the next weeks, we're going to look at how do we love God from a variety of different ways, ways that connect in different ways with our souls, ways that bring us life as well as love. We're going to give hints and helps and ideas. And so I invite you on this journey with me to learn how we can more deeply love God. Let's start 2021 off in a, in a good place, loving God with all that we are. I think it will be quite the journey, and I hope you'll join me. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty God, we give you thanks for being a God who goes with us every step, every moment of every day. We thank you that you are a God who desires to be in relationship with us. So God, as we start this new series, as we start this new year, help us turn our hearts more and more towards you. That we might learn how to love you more with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole soul, and all of our strength. Bring us joy in the midst of this journey. Bring us, draw us closer to you. 
and give us the life that you promise. I pray this all in your name and power. Amen. So in keeping with the tradition of hearing God's command and then repeating it back, we're going to do this song today to remind us of what Jane has just invited us to. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. With all your Well, the Lord who calls us to love him more than anything is the Lord who also invites us to his table. And so I invite you to get your bread and your wine handy and, um, and prepare to come to this meal that Jesus invites us to. Jesus puts no limits on this meal. He doesn't say we have to be one way or another, or we have to be good enough, or we have to have done the right things. He simply says, come, come and take and eat, come and feel the presence of God with you. And so I invite you to pick up the piece of bread that you have with you and to say with me this morning. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread gave thanks for it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then I invite you to uh, pick up your cup of wine or grape juice and then to say with me, 
After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember then, and as we prepare to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer that he has taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you to commune with the people who are in your home with you today. If you have someone with you who chooses to not partake in the meal, then I invite you to give them a blessing. Something as simple as remember God loves you always or that Jesus is with you always. Something like that. There are no wrong words. And then invite you to, uh, to the table and Chris is going to play for us. And once you're done doing communion, then I invite you into a, a time where of prayer or thoughtfulness or you can think about what offering might you give to God this week, whether that's your time, your talents, your treasure, but how, what might, how and what might you offer to God this week? My friends, come now. Come taste, eat, and be fed.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for making all things new. As another year begins, help us live each day for you. May we continually have a new song in our hearts to sing to you. And may your spirit lead us each step of this new year. We ask for your wisdom, for your strength and power to be constantly present within us. We pray you would make us strong and courageous for the road ahead. Give us ability beyond what we feel able to do. Let your gifts flow freely through us so that you would be honored by our lives and others would be drawn to you. Shine your light in us, through us, and over us. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and purposes. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, as we go about our work for this week, may the peace of God reign in your heart. May the love of God forever hold you tight. May the spirit of God flow through your life and the joy of God uphold you day and night. Amen. remembers this truth. God reigns and God loves you. 
And then in that, we're empowered to go love God's world. Have a great rest of your week. It's all God's children singing glory.